Okay, Couture Crafters, let's get into this video. This is my Halloween project for this year. I am so excited that I have finished it and that it is done. I am meeting my goals. Now all I have to do is make a Halloween card and then 10 videos. <laughs> that sounds a little more um, intense than I thought it would, but hey, little by little. So this is a Tim Holtz shifter stencil. You know what? I'm really into these shifter stencils. I didn't think I would be, but I bought a bunch of them and I'm into them. Uh, this is the second year that I've used them um, in my Halloween project and I love them. So I put down the first color and then with because it's black, you can really see it. So I move it over a little bit and now I'm getting ready to put down another color. I just got these brushes by... Um, tailored expressions and so I'm really excited that um they're working out great with these distress oxides uh they do blend they blend nice I wanted to see the difference so at the bottom I used that foam sponge to see how it would work or if it looked any different and honestly it didn't it didn't look different at all they cover the same they blend easily but oxides blend easily easier than dyes anyway so you know, um, but they're fast and they're quick and they are, you know, they're just easier. No complaints. I saw somebody do a stencil like this, the shifter stencil with four colors. So I wanted to see how they did it. So all they're doing is putting down one color, shifting it, moving it over. But if you really look at it, there is space for it to go two more times and so that's what I tried so I think I put down the purple first then I put down the orange and now I'm getting ready to put down two more colors I'm just cleaning off these stencils with the baby wipe in between and a paper towel so I'm shifting it for the third time I just found where the little diamonds didn't have any ink and it worked out. So there you are right there, shifting it over a little bit. And I'm using purple tape, which is that reusable tape. That's the best repositionable tape I have ever used ever. That tape, everybody should have one. I need to add that to my favorites video because that purple tape is amazing. I go back and forth between using a sponge and using the brushes. Not really a big deal for this, I don't think. I'm just trying to get these patterns down on this cardstock. I'm technically making my own pattern paper here. So if you shift the stencil again, you can use another color. So I can use four whole colors. And again, using a tailored expression brush and this hickory smoke oxide for the first time. And I like it. I like it a lot. See, nice and quick and easy. And now we have four different colors. Pretty cool. So I'm using the Etc. set with the windows and a vignette set all by um, Stampers Anonymous, I believe, Tim Holtz. All associated with Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. Matter of fact, this is a very Tim Holtz, Stampers Anonymous, Ranger heavy project, as are most of my projects like this. I love these things. They're made out of like, I want to say a bunch of paper. It's not really wood. It's like chipboard, but like thicker than chipboard. I don't know what it's called. But I grabbed my Dremel and I used it to cut through because it's easier. You can actually do this with your scissors and just go on ahead or, or a razor blade and just score it a couple times. And then you can probably just break it apart. I might just use my Dremel to cut through it and then sand it down. If you don't have a Dremel to sand, you can use a nail file. I don't know why I pulled that nail file out. I guess just to show you guys that you can use a nail file. Um, be careful. I should not be using my Dremel right here. This should be done outside or in a workspace, but whatever. I didn't want to move and I wanted to show you guys what I was doing. So I just did it all right there. It didn't, um, produce a whole bunch of sand. I'm not sand dust a little bit, but not a ton, not enough to make me not want to do it where I was sitting. So I just did it. I put both of them together so that they would be even because I'll be stacking these later on in the video. And I'm just taking the sanding um, 
nib on my Dremel and sanding it away and wiping it off and wiping things down and it was nice and easy. Now we're going to rip the paper. I'm going to do a little bit of collaging just to give myself a base to start with. And so I use black and orange, purple and black, black and gray, and I'm just tearing these little things up into little pieces. Try not to keep any harsh edges, any straight lines, anything like that. <clears throat> Sorry if you guys can hear my TV, but it's super far. And if I walk over there, you will hear my husband snoring in addition to my TV. So <laughs> I'm just going to let it play. And hopefully it's not too distracting in the background. I'm watching Frasier because I'm always watching Frasier. It is like my, I don't know. It's, it's just something I watch every day. So I grabbed some matte medium here. This is by Liquitex. Dina Wakely's is the one that I wish I had because that one works 20 times better. This paper, this cardstock is a heavy cardstock and it did not want to bend to my will. But after I got it nice and super wet, it was fine. I tried using some of Jane Davenport's too, which also worked just fine. But there's just, it's such a tiny tube. And then I found that if I just give it a minute to really absorb the matte medium then it will work I don't have to use all of my Jane Davenport matte medium and so here it looks like a mess because you know what it is a mess <laughs> I grabbed um, the paper I collaged it down and then I just started to paint the areas that were not painted and I just plopped some colors down here and there no rhyme or reason I used gray a like lilac color purple and black and we're just and I love this Dina Wakely brush. Dina Wakely makes brushes that really are scary and let you move and push your paint around however you want. And Oh, I just love them. And they're long handled. So you feel like you're really doing something because I am not a painter. Not my gift, but I enjoy using these brushes. Matter of fact, I want like three more sets of them. Although I don't have any room for that. So, okay, I won't do that just yet. But those long handled ones, oh just makes me feel like I'm really doing something so here I'm pushing the paint all around trying to get some decent coverage trying to add color where I didn't and then I was kind of looking at it and those oranges are kind of throwing me off so eventually I push all that stuff back to the background but I'm enjoying myself dropping these colors and playing with it and all the things I'm working on a Teflon mat. I think this is one by Ranger or yeah, Stampers Anonymous. Um, it's it's my palette. It's what I what I'm using. I put it down specifically so that I can throw paint down on it and then just move on. Uh, I'm cleaning it with a baby wipe now. Afterwards, I clean. I always keep some hand sanitizer on my desk because that really cleans everything. So to bring it all together, I grab my stencil again and I just grab some of that light gray paint and I'm just stenciling through it. I wish I had turned the stencil more. I wish I had knocked that stuff back in the background a little bit more. It's been a while since I've done a mixed media anything. And you know what? If you don't use it, you will lose it. So make sure that you're playing with your stuff and keeping yourself fresh because otherwise you will you'll lose it. <laughs> so I am you know happy with the way that this turned out but the background was a hot mess at first <clears throat> but I got it together in the end so I'm popping out the pieces and I'm grabbing two of the small pieces I think I ended up grabbing three total so I popped out three of the shorter pieces that come in the etc kit and now I'm gluing them all together on the sides I'm making a ledge right now and I'm using my art glitter glue because it is my jam. We know it. I love it. That stuff works with virtually anything. And it's my go-to glue for most things when I need a wet glue. That's the glue that's replaced almost all my other adhesives, really. And so now I'm just looking. And, and I thought I was going to need the larger um, ledge set. But really, I didn't. I did not. I used the smaller one. I was very surprised about that. I grabbed some Diane Reefly paint because it is matte and it dries quick. It is actually my preferred paint. Um, it dries matte. So you can go over it with things and it will absorb it. 
my preference again. At first I was using Liquitex Basics, which is fine. I have a ton of those around because when they go on sale at Michael's, you're supposed to buy the things that go on sale. Why? Because we that's just what we do. But this is actually my preference. This is some of the best paint ever. It will dry out. Before I close it, I go on ahead and give it a couple of squirts of water with the Tim Holtz Mister in the cap and then close it up as tight as I can. It is not meant to last forever. Diane says she gets these calls of people saying, my paint is dried out. She said, well, yeah, it's not meant to last forever. I actually had one that I pulled out during this um, project and it was dried and I had to toss it. But thank God I had another one. So I'm shaking these up and they always say, don't shake them up and down, kind of swirl it around. I store mine on the side so that the mica does not settle at the bottom and go up through the, um, through the pump. I had a little, a few little issues with that one there, but it unclogged so easy. I just popped a pin in there and, and it just started coming out immediately. I didn't have a, a bunch of problems. These shimmer sprays kick all other shimmer sprays butts. Like remember back in the day we used to tattered angels everything. And then I was into um, Lindy Stamp Gang stuff and all that. And they're good. But these here are better. They're such a punch of color and mica. Uh, I really think that they're different than the other ones. And I am very, very pleased with the punch that they pack. I am using regular adhesive here. And I'm gluing it to my Tim Holtz glass mat. And I grabbed, I think that's, I don't think it's scattered straw. I think it's mustard seed and riped, no, carved pumpkin. And I'm using my tattered, no, what is, uh, tailored expressions brushes. And I cut out that circle using my Cricut. I cut out all these other elements using my Cricut too. I just searched, um, trees i think i searched trees and searched halloween to see what images came up um i really like doing this i love silhouettes on cards i just it's black probably probably because it's just a black outline and i love me some black so i took this tree and i'm letting you guys see me push it into the corner i didn't score it i just kind of let it do its natural thing to give some some interest to this background and I cut it out twice. And on the other side, I think I just flipped it over. Remember, when you're using stuff like this, you can use both sides. You just make it work for what you need it to work for. And I'm pushing it into the corner and I'm playing with it. And then I just take the glue. And I love that it has the super fine tip nozzle because I can really get on all the branches to the tips without it being a problem. And I put the other tree on the other side, trying to make sure that you can see that branch on the right hand side. I cut out some witches and I should have made the third witch smaller. However, I was asking a lot of my cricket to cut out these tiny pieces. It did okay. But, you know, cricket in tiny pieces sometimes goes a little left. You have to make sure you have the right pressure, the right card stock. Um, the right blade, then sometimes it goes a little left. It did an okay job, though. I wish I had had these in dies, though, in regular steel dies or um, the metal dies because it would have cut so perfectly. And I could have cut a little itty-bitty one so that she would have looked like she was furthest away. Here's the fun part. Six and a half by four. This is vellum from Simon Says Stamp. I love this vellum because it's so thick. You can heat emboss on it. It can hold quite a bit of whatever medium you're using. It's a really nice vellum. So I take my Tim Holtz platform. And I'm taking the etc. piece that's been sprayed and painted. And I'm using my magnets to hold down the vellum. You can hardly see it because it's the same color just about as the background. And I'm grabbing this stamp. Oh my goodness, when I saw this stamp, guys, I immediately fell in love and knew I had to have this set. She has got her arm up over her head and she is sexy. So I have flipped it over and picked the stamp up after lining it up on how I kind of wanted it in that etc. piece. I just lined it up on top of the piece. I was kind of making sure that it would fit through the window. I don't want to use the word, so I took a baby wipe and just wiped them off. And now I'm stamping it down. And she is right where I want her. Now I tested Copic markers. I tested, what else did I test? I test colored pencils 
And I found that these Tombow markers work best, which means Tim Holtz Distress Markers probably will work really well for this too. I flipped the image over. So right now I'm coloring on the back side. I use Memento Tuxedo Black to stamp with. But when you use that and then you color on top of it with Copics on this vellum, it picks up, it picks up the Copic um, and it starts to erase. And so you don't want that to happen. So I figured the best thing to do was just to color on the back. It's vellum so you'll be able to see through it. Oddly enough, these Tombow markers really blend really well on the back of this. I don't know why, but they do. And again, I tested them. These were the ones that came up the most vibrant. I don't know why it works. It just does. And so I'm coloring her a kind of blue-green color. I like her that color. Her dress is purple. And this is such a loosey-goosey kind of um, sketched drawing so you really don't need to be perfect with the coloring which is great because you guys know that is not my gift and I'm just adding some red hair oh look at her pretty aerial red hair I just oh when I tell you I love this lady yeah maybe I'll do like a ton of cards and they'll all have her on them just kidding I don't have time for that but and there you go I just flipped it over and you can kind of see and there are a few other little things that I wanted to do, so I just did that. Now, here's one of the ones that I was playing with. And I'm using repositionable adhesive, and I'm just going to put her down over herself. If I were doing this again, I would have just cut an oval and covered her. And now I put the stencil down over her. She's underneath. But I really wish I had cut an oval and not this. And I'll show you why in just a second. I'm mixing up some, this isn't texture paste, it's like gel. Um, it's like a gel medium and I'm going to take some more of that perfect pearls and pour it over the gel medium I used way too much there was no need to use as much gel medium as I use and there was absolutely no need to use as much of the perfect pearls I was very wasteful here and you can see it's kind of turning into a champagne color I really wanted a clear iridescent color but I don't think this is a clear gel I don't think I use the clear gel. I don't even know if I have a clear gel um, in this Novaplex. I use some more purple tape, stuff I love. And we're just pulling the paste through the stencil with our palette knife. Just pulling it through. Look at all this. I should have used this on another project, but I am so impatient. Ooh, the reveal is so pretty. And then I just pulled the lady off. And see, that's the issue right there. I wish I had done an oval because that star is way too close to her. And you can't really get the effect of her arm being up, which is what I really love about this. So I hit it with the heat gun to dry it and it worked out fine. And then, of course, I'm gluing down the top piece to the vellum. And I'm using art glitter glue to do it. And I made sure to just put the art glitter glue on the, you know, on the columns and whatnot. Now I'm cutting out a bunch of bats. Did I use all these bats? No. So now I have a million bats and nothing to do with them. I hope I can think of a card to use those bats with. Now when you're trimming your vellum, hold your scissors at an angle so that you're not leaving anything around the edges. At least you're trying not to. Again, hold them at an angle. You'll know what I'm talking about when you're doing it. So that way you really don't see any of that vellum around the edges. And now I'm just making sure that it lines up pretty good. And it does. Now I'm just going to take my Dremel again and just drill a little hole really quickly. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And now I'm taking the Tim Holtz lights. There's two in a pack. Actually, I'm taking my little dust buster and <laughs> getting up the, <laughs> the dust. Um, so these are the Tim Holtz lights. There's two that come in a pack. And I unwound them. I thought I unwound them fully, but I didn't. And pulled them through to the front. I decided not to take that other part through the front. It just seemed like it should have stayed in the back. So that's fine. I literally took some tape and taped it now. And then I was like, oh, I don't like that. That's repositionable tape. I'll grab some scotch tape. And <laughs> just taped it down for now. You can glue this to the back or do whatever it is you want to do or hide it. I was going to decorate the back of this, but nope not not happening so what I did was I took my glue gun and I started to glue this little wire all around and I have those hot glue um, tools so that I don't burn my fingers 
Now, what I'm trying to do is put a light behind all of the holes. I didn't do all of the holes, but I did it enough so that the lights will show through and not be hidden behind those columns. You don't want that. And then I just glued it all down to the back using my hot glue gun. No rhyme or reason to the way that I did the lights. I just threw them back there. I wasn't overly concerned with where everything was exactly. I just tried to make sure that there was at least a light behind the majority of the holes. And I glued it down. And now I'm going to glue this top piece. Again, only putting glue behind the columns. Otherwise, you'll be able to see it with this vellum. And you don't want to be able to do that. The only thing you want to see behind the vellum are the lights. So make sure you do not just put glue everywhere. I don't care if it is clear drying glue. Don't do it. And then we're just hit the button. And now she's lit up. Love it. So now with this ledge, I was trying to figure out, did I want to put it under it or on top of it? And I'm really glad that I put it on top and not all the way on the actual thing. You see, it's sitting on top of the, the window. And then we're just going to put some glue underneath to make sure that it's stabilized. We're smoothing it out. And once it dries, it will really have some stabilization to it. That ledge, I'm glad that I put it on top because it gave me more room to stack stuff on there because I knew I wanted to put stuff outside of our window. And there's the bat. I love that I used the bat. I couldn't figure out if I was going to use the spider web or the bat. Spider web or the bat. And I chose the bat and I'm glad that I did. Especially seeing as all I cut out those 15 million bats in the corner that I have nothing to do with. And this is some moss from Michael's. And I just pushed it down. And I like that I got the moss that had like the multi-blend to it. Um, so some of it's dead looking. Some of it's green. That made me happy. And I just started pushing it down and packing it in there. And then I decided that we needed a little bit of moss outside the window too. Make it cohesive and kind of spooky and old. And again, there's all different kinds of moss in there. So I just broke it apart and then I started gluing in elements, all these ideology and stampers and I think they're all ide ideology. Actually, I got the hand coming out of the grave kind of thing going on here. I have these pumpkins that I love. They're so cute. And I've got skulls and all kinds of stuff. There was a piece of foam in the beginning that came in the vignette. I totally used it right here. I'm so glad that I didn't throw it away. Although if I had thrown it away, I just would have gone in the trash and got it out. I needed to add some height so that the bottles kind of looked like they were different sizes and they were all able to be shown. So I stacked, um, I cut the foam into pieces and then just stacked them on top of each other. And then I decided to cover them with some moss. Yeah, the, if in the very beginning of the video, you'll see a cube of foam that came with the vignette. And I just took my... Um, pin my pin blade there and sliced into that baby and then look now I'm covering it with moss to give it different heights so there you go I love that this glue gun that I'm using I think it's a Sherbon has that super fine tip I found that that was the best thing to use for this particular project not that you can't use a regular glue gun but that super fine tip makes a big difference and I just decided that I needed a little bit more moss there and just to make it cohesive. Now, this was fun. I wish that I had, this is grit paste. Um, I wish that I had busted out my black texture paste because I bet you I have black texture paste. Very difficult to make it black, seeing as all that it's stark white, <laughs> so you're going to get gray. I was shooting for black, but I didn't want to wait for it to dry. And in my, I've I think I did a project where I took like an old Calypso bottle and I took some clay heads and I stuck them in there. I think I got it from Rachel years ago. And that's kind of where I got this idea. I wanted the eyes to look like they were coming out of the, um, the bottle. Once that grit paste touches that eye, it's on there, which really didn't bother me because the eye was a little stark white. I probably should put some yellow or something on there now that I think about it. Oh, well. And so I just loaded up the bottle and just gave it some texture to make it kind of look old and not so pristine. And I used that grit paste to actually I think I glued it down 
first. And then I use the grit paste just to kind of add some texture to the bottle and give it some, some, some texture and life and grotiness. <laughs> and I'm working that palette knife. I like this palette knife. And I just wipe it off afterwards. And then use, I'll use it for something else. I hit this with the heat gun, which made it bubble. But I really wasn't concerned about it truly drying as grit paste. I figured it would do its own thing and have its own textures. There are certain things that you're not supposed to heat by Tim Holtz. Not sure if this is one of them because I certainly did it. And then I thought, this needs words. But I didn't have any words that I really, well, I don't know what I have. But I, you know, I just got this Halloween set by Tailored Expressions. And it's one of the ones where you can stamp it and then run it through with that dye. And then you have like 20 sentiments at one time. I just wanted to use the bottom ones. They're really, really cute Halloween sentiments. I didn't even really look at them well, I think, when I purchased them. And so I think the bottom one says, from your girl, ghoul friend. Um, there's another one that says, you're fabulous, which was cute. And then in the middle, I think it says, you are spooktacular. Such cute sentiments. There's some more on there. Check them out, Tailored Expression Sentiments. And I know that I wanted to cut it super duper duper close. Like I just wanted it just to be a little hint of something. So I stamped it in VersaFine, VersaMark, and then hit it with Perfect Pearls. You guys, thanks so much if you made it through these 30-minute video. See you soon.